Hi, my name is Alex Gates. I'm the executive director and curator here at the Canadian Automotive Museum in Oshawa, Ontario. Uh, this museum opened back in 1963 with the mission to tell the story of the Canadian automobile. Uh, so by that we mean cars that were both built here in Canada and cars that were owned and driven by Canadians. Uh, here at the museum we have over 70 vehicles on display dating from the turn of the 20th century all the way to the turn of the 21st century as well. The museum is two floors. On the main floor we have our, our largest cars, uh, so some cars that were owned by uh, very wealthy Canadians over the years uh, from coast to coast. Uh, and upstairs we have a lot of uh, cars that were owned by Canadians of all different statuses. Uh, so we have things from uh, Canadian Model T's, McLaughlin Buicks, uh, obscure cars uh, by modern standards such as the Grey Dort uh, or a Tuthope McIntyre. Cars ranging from the early period, uh, pre-war cars, uh, the brass era, uh, through the mid-century as well. Uh, and many of these cars were built here in Oshawa. Um, Oshawa, Ontario is home to the largest automotive manufacturing plant in North America in the mid-20th century. Uh, and millions and millions of cars have been produced here. Uh, many cars that we know and love today. So some of my favorite cars in the collection include our 1983 uh, DeLorean. Uh, everyone loves a DeLorean because of Back to the Future. Uh, but we actually have a Canadian spec DeLorean. Uh, so at the end of production, uh, most cars were produced for the American market. About 88 were sent here to Canada. Uh, and by Canadian spec, I mean it has kilometers and a few other things that differentiate it from an American car. And uh, we absolutely love it uh, because it's shiny and, and people love that movie. One of our, our favorite vehicles uh, as well is the 1919 Royal Tour car. Uh, this is a 1914 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. Uh, it was owned by Sir Mortimer Davis in Montreal. Uh, and Sir Mortimer Davis uh, loaned it to the Prince of Wales in 1919 after the uh, end of the First World War, uh, the Prince came for a three-month tour of uh, Canada and uh, visited cities like Montreal uh, and used this car uh, for official touring uh, throughout the city. So this is on loan to us uh, from the studio here in, in Toronto uh, and it's a, a great promotional piece uh, for Disney Pixar Cars 3 and uh, we're glad to be able to display it for visitors and their, their families coming through. We have, we have a, a 1902 Orient, uh, so the Orient is a, really an example of what, what you would just need for, uh, to be, have an automobile. You really just need four wheels, an engine on it, and a way to steer, and hopefully a way to stop as well, uh, though early on that wasn't much of a, a concern. Uh, it was really about getting going faster and faster and faster, so it doesn't have a steering wheel, it has tiller steering on it, and that's all you really need uh, for an automobile, so many visitors think, oh, I could make one of those, uh, and we often talk about the difference between making one car versus making millions of cars on a production line and uh, what it took to really get a, a car company off, uh, off the ground in the early 20th century. Uh, so we have two uh, Ford Model T's that were built here in Canada. Uh, so Ford, uh, of course, is an American company, uh, but starting in uh, 1909, they start producing Ford Model T's here in, uh, in Canada, across from Detroit in Windsor. Uh, so we have two different Model T's. Uh, the first is a 1909, uh, which is the, the older model, which is uh, made of wood, uh, and so it's painted red. Uh, many people think that Model T's were only coming in, came in black. So the 1915 next to it is, is more the traditional Model T uh, that many people often think of. Uh, brass era car, uh, black paint on it. So showing kind of the two different styles. And of course they produce Model T's here uh, in Canada all the way up through the 1920s. Well, we do have a few uh, European uh, and British sports cars that came into the collection uh, that were owned by prominent Canadians. Uh, so this includes a, a Bugatti, uh, as well as a, a really cool red Alfa Romeo. The Alfa was uh, owned by uh, a Toronto businessman, uh, John A. Uh, Bud McDougall. Uh, when he passed away, uh, his family donated his car collection to the museum. Uh, so it, it allows us to both discuss Canadian-built cars, but also compare them uh, in a, a global uh, conversation about what was happening in Europe and the United States uh, and in Canada uh, during the early 20th century in terms of car production. Another great Italian car was the, uh, the Isotta Freschini. It was actually another car from the McDougall collection. Uh, it was originally purchased in London uh, by a gentleman in Ireland back in the 1920s. Uh, and then uh, after he was uh, finished with the car, uh, it came over here to Canada. It's a wonderful uh, example of a really high-end, uh, beautiful Italian uh, you know, custom coachwork job. The earliest Canadian car that we have in our collection is, is the 1903 uh, Red Path Messenger. Uh, this is a small car, uh, very small by modern standards. Uh, and it wouldn't have been thought of as a an automobile in terms of getting from place to place, but really uh, something that was just fun to drive around uh, back in the early 1900s. Uh, so these are just a few of them were built out in Kitchener, Ontario. 
We have seven Rolls Royces in the collection. So Rolls Royce well, it was never built here in Canada. Uh, they were built uh, both in England and in the United States. But the Rolls Royces that we have in our collection uh, were all owned by prominent Canadians. Uh, and so with that come unique stories of, of how they were used, uh, the events they went to. So the earliest being in 1912, uh, the 1912 Silver Ghost uh, was owned by Lady Eaton. Uh, many. Uh, here in Canada are familiar with the Eaton's department store. So at the time she purchased uh, both that vehicle and two others. Uh, she bought three Rolls-Royce limousines at the same time. This one is known as Ladybird, uh, and we've recently had that up to the Cabo Beach Concord Elegance. Similar to that car is the 1914 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost, uh, Ghost, which was owned by Sir Mortimer Davis in Montreal. Uh, so we have two early Silver Ghosts, uh, which would have been really the most expensive and, and elaborate car you could have owned uh, in the early 19-teens. So these folks were, were really showing off uh, their wealth and their status, uh, both in Toronto and Montreal, the two major cities. Another car people often uh, look at is our 1980K car. Uh, so it's not the most glamorous car that we have here uh, in the collection, uh, but really represents uh, a shift in North American production. Uh, many of us who grew up in the 1980s remember these, uh, and our Chrysler K car uh, really represents that story. Uh, and ours is actually a pre-production model, um, so it doesn't have a VIN number. It's a, a test model uh, that was actually built when they were designing the car. And so there's a few things you'll notice about the car, if you look really closely, uh, that uh, never went into production. Uh, so the roof racks, for example, uh, were a production uh, item that never ended up happening. Uh, the seats are slightly different sizes uh, and a few other things on the interior uh, never went to full production. Uh, so it's a bit of a cool car talking about sort of the development uh, of something that just became so iconic in the 1980s. Another popular car that we have in our collection uh, is our Corvair. Uh, Corvairs were great cars that were made here in Oshawa. Uh, and of course with Ralph Nader uh, back in the 1960s, they have a, a bit of a reputation as well as being unsafe. Uh, now many uh, people here in Oshawa who worked on those cars, drove those cars, and still own and collect those cars uh, will say differently, but that car uh, is, is very well known, again, outside of, of how popular it was back in the 1960s. One of the things we also like to talk about here at the museum is, is sort of the status and reputation that cars uh, have uh, through different things like media, uh, through books, through uh, TV performances uh, that uh, give a life of their own um, after the vehicles are, are done being produced. This building was uh, originally uh, the Ontario Motor Sales Room uh, in downtown Oshawa. GM was, was building um, thousands of cars uh, here in downtown Oshawa at the time of the 1920s. Uh, and, and this is the dealership that uh, local residents would have gone to, to to purchase a Chevrolet or an Oakland automobile. So the front uh, where our offices now are would have been the showroom and then back uh, would have been parts uh, as well as service for uh, new vehicles. So this building was, was built originally for automobiles. That sales room was here up until the early 1930s. After that, this is actually a pharmaceutical company uh, for about 25 years. And then 1963, the museum opened uh, in this location and we've been here ever since. So the building was designed for cars. Uh, so it's, it's reinforced uh, quite well for the weight. Uh, and uh, I think it has a, a lot of character. Uh, originally, uh, there would have been lots of uh, windows on the building, uh, which now for climate control, for what we do as a museum, we've insulated the building and uh, we still have the windows in place. So you can get an idea of, of the large factory, uh, sort of industrial building this would have felt like uh, with lots of fresh air, lots of natural light um, that they originally were worked with back in the 1920s. The museum is located at 99 Simcoe Street South in downtown Oshawa. Uh, if you're not familiar with Oshawa, we're about an hour east of, of downtown Toronto uh, here in Canada. Uh, we do have a website, uh, CanadianAutomotiveMuseum.com, and you can certainly follow us uh, on Instagram at Canadian Automotive Museum, uh, on Facebook, uh, and on Twitter as well. Our Twitter uh, handle is at CanAutomuse. And uh, we have lots of programs, uh, lots of cool things happening, so we encourage you to, to stop by and, and check out what's happening.